And good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for making our way to our webinar today. My name is Jeffrey Tesh. I'm CEO of RCN Capital. And today's webinar is really going to cover how, how we're fueling the nation's top investment class in today's marketplace. The single family rental marketplace across the United States is just absolutely exploding. And we've partnered up with a fantastic company based out of Arizona. And we have Michael Finch on board today to talk a little bit about how SFR Hub is getting folks across the United States investment community the products they need to build out their portfolio. So, Michael, welcome aboard. How are you? I am doing well, Jeff. Thank you very much. Appreciate uh, appreciate everybody's time here today. Yeah, my pleasure. Um, you know, we've really gotten to know you and gotten to know your company. Um, and RCN is always looking for companies such as yourself to partner up with. And boy, you guys are just exploding in volume as well. Michael, maybe you could start a little bit about yourself and uh, how, how you got into SFR Hub and, and talk about uh, the company in general. Yeah, yeah, I would love to. And, and thank you for the introduction. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, a little bit of background on myself. Been in the commercial brokerage industry for, I don't know, going on 17 years now. Uh, very extensive background in, in land um, and multifamily. I've uh, worked with most of the institutional players uh, in Arizona and the Southwest, uh, all pre uh, getting into the SFR world. Um, it was probably 2014 that my partner Jeff Klein and I uh, sort of stumbled on our first single family portfolio, um, almost didn't know what to do with it and um, ended up ended up you know taking a look at it you know doing some underwriting uh wrapping our arms around it and and thought we could sell it and and uh i think in early 2015 we did and that's when we kind of realized it was about 50 some odd homes about eight million dollar package um but, you know it was, a, it was a nice little deal you know we made a nice little commission on it and and we were looking at the space and, and said god it doesn't seem like there's any institutional um brokerages focusing on this space it it, it you know it was like you all know especially back in 2014 and 15 it was you know the, the REITs were just establishing the institutional quality from an operation standpoint and you know we said hey i think we you know we can do something here and we kind of shifted all of our attention to, to single family portfolios at that time from a brokerage standpoint you know uh kind of dropped all the focus on multifamily and land that we were involved in and and you know really made a, an effort to um you know to to move to the sfr world and at that point we started uh you know refining our processes and and building a team and started shopping around to see um you know where where we should be at the time we were at a, a wealth development company uh building their brokerage and and we knew we needed we were we were gaining notoriety in 2015 and in 2016 for you know how we underwrite how we package these investment portfolios together and we knew we needed a national platform and that's when we approached svn um which you know for some of you you may remember it as fairly than us but uh you know certainly the acronym to svn uh and and we were able to negotiate a a franchise uh with svn corporate and that's when we started svn sfr hub advisors uh, and I, I believe that started in early 2016. So uh, we were really excited to get started, um, you know, with SVN and have that national platform. Uh, that's that's so necess necessary in a in a institutional, you know, commercial real estate world. And you know, at the time, we were the only commercial brokerage in it, and I still think today we are the only uh, commercial brokerage that's fully focused 100 percent on the single family investment asset class you know which includes build for rent you know new construction uh rental homes um so so in 2017 once we had our svn franchise and svn is the sixth largest commercial brokerage in the world uh all offices are independently owned and operated uh we had successfully negotiated with corporate 
um, and, and are, are the only office in their franchise history that was given the entire United States as our primary market. Uh, very fortunate uh, to have that, that opportunity. And, and that's largely because we didn't compete with other offices you know, around the country that do you know, more traditional commercial real estate asset classes uh, like multifamily retail office, industrial hospitality, so on and so forth. Um, so, you know, we operate in all 50 states through uh, SVN, SFR Hub Advisors, and uh, we've been building uh, the platform, you know, ever ever since we acquired the, the SVN franchise. Now, simultaneously, and, and, and bear with me, I'll try to keep this as short as possible on, on the companies that we operate under the SFR Hub umbrella, but simultaneously, in 2016, we started raising capital to build a technology platform around what we were doing because our underwriting, you know, from a, a man woman hour standpoint, uh, was very labor intensive to do it manually. And, and you know, just like all the other big REITs and and groups, you, you got to start utilizing technology. And we were very fortunate to partner with a gentleman named Dale Jensen at SFRHub.com to help us, you know, build build the tech platform. Dale's got a storied career in tech, uh, a storied career in general. Anybody can Google his name and, and see uh, the numerous accomplishments and, and companies he's been involved in over the years. Um, but uh, we, we, we partnered with him in 2016, raised millions of dollars to build uh, the SFRHub.com platform. And that is a, a data valuation and digital technology platform for transacting single family investment portfolios online. Uh, so, you know, first and foremost, it, it's very data intensive. You know, we, whenever we're looking at a portfolio, we're pulling in multiple data points, um, you know, verifying, cleaning and verifying, you know, what that house is at, you know, one, two, three, four Main Street prior to running any values on it. You know, we, we've spent a lot of time over the years helping other uh, groups clean up their portfolios, understand what they're looking at, helping buyers clean and verify the data, you know, before we run through our valuation processes, which we use some of the top ADMs in the country. Uh, but they tend to, they're, they're always more accurate because we're actually, we're actually verifying what that home is before we run it through, which, which I don't think there's a lot of groups out there doing that today. Um, and we had refined that process manually. And then uh, Dale Jensen, our, our tech partner, helped automate all that. So now we can, you know, run a thousand homes, you know, through our system in, in pretty short order where, you know, that would have taken us, you know, two months to to, to manually underwrite all those things. So SFRHub.com, you know, our technology platform powers our brokerage. And, and, you know, fast forward to, I think it was December of 2018 when we officially launched SFRHub.com at the IMN conference. And since then, we've just been enhancing it. And, and you know, coming to today, um, you know, two of the five companies that we operate, which is SFRHub.com and SVN, SFR Hub Advisors, you know, we at any given time have plus minus a billion dollars worth of inventory on our site. And, um, you know, we've been very fortunate to to grow a great team here. Uh, that's headquartered in Phoenix, and um, you know we've we've been off to the races ever since, and and uh, you know we've got multiple transactions going right now, both in the uh, single family uh, existing portfolio space as well as the uh, new construction build for rent space. So um, I can get into more detail on on some of our companies and and what we do, but that's about as quick of a kind of a a background on on how we got to where we are today uh, for for right now. So I, I hope that helps you. Yeah, absolutely, Michael. Um, and congratulations. Uh, what what you and Jeff have been able to accomplish in such a short period of time is is really impressive. Um, and also having the vision uh, to be able to anticipate what was coming down the road from a single family aggregation uh, standpoint. You know, it's funny. I listening to you tell the story of how how you built um, you know SVN SFR Hub. I, it it made me think back to when you know we started RCN Capital back in 2010, and you know at the time our play was strictly providing capital to investors who were attempting to take advantage of foreclosures and short sales because of you know the calamity of the housing uh, meltdown at, at that time, and you know our whole goal was to take a product that had always been in the shadows, uh, which is asset-based lending, and professionalize it, right? 
um, and, and professionalizing a product. That was our goal, taking that, that asset-based loan and elevating it to a commercial loan status is really what we focused on from the very beginning. Um, and I think back to it, and I think how much times have changed, but they, at the end of the day, they've really stayed the same, right? At the end of the day, w your company and my company were just to providing a service to investors across the United States on how to help them build their portfolio. In the beginning, you know, we were strictly for, focused on that short-term debt, uh, you know, revolving buy, fix, sell. And then as time went on, uh, you know, certainly by 2017, we, the, the, the portfolio request began to come in and the single asset re request came in for, uh, aggregating homes for rent. And, um, and then from there, you know, we, we morphed into what uh, RCN is today, which is one of the largest uh, single family rental lenders in the, in the country. And it, at the end of the day, uh, very similar to your story, focused on the investor, focused how the investor is going to win. Um, and, and that's what I'm really excited about uh, this right. this call today. Yeah. Uh, because I, at the end of the day, the investors on this call really just want to learn, one, how can I find more assets? And two, how can I finance them? And uh, the front end of that question is truly an interesting question today. Um, with... Uh, the state of the United uh, home market, we are seeing such aggregation in all geographic regions across the United States. Maybe you could talk a little bit about how SVN SFR hub is kind of fitting into that marketplace today. Um, you, you know, you mentioned the billion dollars in inventory. Maybe you could talk to our listeners today about where where these uh, assets are coming from, how long they stay on your platform, and and how the investors can really engage with you to be able to help build out their portfolios. Yeah, no, absolutely, and, and it's a great question. I mean, the 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 assets are coming, you know, from from all different sources. Um, you know, just for example, today uh, this morning I spoke to a gentleman. He is uh, buying. A number about 200 homes, uh, you know, all all sub performing notes, and and he reached out to us because he's planning on on foreclosing on on about 80 percent of them, and he wants to understand the the collateral, you know, behind those notes, and you know, so we're going to help him, you know, through the the data and asset auditing process and valuation process and and income approach, you know, doing what we do at us of our hub .com. And and then he's gonna you know do what he does, and then he's gonna list them with us, you know, once they're uh, REO. So so gonna be a good opportunity uh, to to um, you know market a couple hundred homes in the uh, Midwest. Uh, in in that example, uh, we we leverage our SVN agents all over the country. There's about two thousand of them, you know, that all work with high net worth investors. And you know, getting back to to what I mentioned earlier. You know, a number, uh, I mean, there were no commercial agents and there really are, are very few today that are playing in the space, but but we can leverage, you know, our SVN agents around the country and, you know, get them educated on the space and say, hey, when you're talking to your multifamily guys or you're talking to your retailer your office guys, these are investors that probably own single family rental homes as well. You know, you just would never, you would never ask the question because you're focused on multifamily. Well, now you have a team within SVN that can assist. So we've turned up a number of opportunities, you know, through getting other agents educated on, on the space so we can get those portfolios listed, you know, on our site. Um, and then same with with builder relationships. You know, we've we've historically just from older, older, um, you know, careers uh, ha and, and through SVN have have long standing relationships with developers and builders around the country. You know, which is another reason we're as successful as we are in leading the charge in the build for rent space. So, you know, we're in, you know, from an existing portfolio standpoint, we've got assets, you know, that that are listed today that are that are in underwriting uh, that, you know, we know are forthcoming. Maybe maybe the the operator needs to season it a little bit, uh, but we've got a pipeline of inventory coming in, you know, 35 plus states uh, right now. And even, you know, starting to see some stuff pop up in the Northeast was just on a phone with a, a guy the other day that's got about 50 properties that, that he's going to want to want to market up in, you know, in, in New York. Um, you know, so, so we're, 
you know, we've, we've done a good job and our marketing team here at SFR Hub has done a phenomenal job of, of getting, getting who we are and, and what we do out to the marketplace. Um, you know, so we've become, we've become the leaders in the space and, and, and we're fortunate that, that, you know, we're a, we're a trusted source um, to, to work with the uh, sellers and buyers of, of single family portfolios. Yeah, no, that makes a ton of sense. And, you know, you mentioned technology and certainly uh, the amount of uh, effort that you've put into SFRHub.com is, is truly impressive. And, you know, to me, this is what separates you uh, from many of the other players, you know, extremely qualified players in the space. Yeah, but, exactly. you know, maybe you could just talk a little bit about how that technology from a customer service standpoint, right? Like most of the folks on our call today are yeah. investors and they want to understand how your technology is going to assist them in not only vetting the portfolio, but maybe when it comes time to sell the same way, how will it help them? Maybe you could talk about that a little bit, Michael. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I guess here's here's one example. And, and this was a, a gentleman who, who came to us? Who you know? We weren't representing the seller, but he he was he was working with the seller on on 240 uh, homes uh, in in a uh, the sort of mid Atlantic market, and he couldn't find a good way to 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 qualify what he was looking at. He he couldn't find good data. They were they were mixed around in in dense urban areas. You know, some of them had never even been in the MLS. Um, you know, there just wasn't a lot out there. So, so he engaged us to help him, you know, utilize SFRB.com and and our data and asset auditing uh, techniques and and underwriting techniques to to really help him wrap his arms around what it was that he was looking at. And it was it was an extent, you know, 240 plus properties. Um, you know, we went in and you know we were pulling data from from every source we can find. And what we've done in the background is create an AI that, you know, as we're pulling in all the data in a particular marketplace that that we have that we're accessing, uh, you know, we'll we are throwing up red flags on any discrepancies. So, you know, if if everything was clean across the board on, on you know that particular house within you know that larger portfolio, you know, we can we feel pretty confident that we've got a clean data file. But if you know, one data source, you know, just a, a, a very basic example would red flag, you know, say four four data sources say it's a, a three bedroom and one says it's a four. Well, that's a red flag. Why is that data source saying it's a four? You know, so then we've got our human capital that digs in further, you know, all professionally licensed real estate agents that have that have been in real estate for many years and, and they're gonna dig in and they're gonna verify that. And they're, you know, they're gonna be looking, you know, at county records and title and you know, any and you know, contacting you know the seller or you know, looking, looking to see if you know uh, there's been you know any inspections or or any um, you know plans you know uh, still still at the city level uh, that we can verify any of this stuff. So so we dig in pretty thoroughly once those red flags are are acknowledged, and then you know from that point you know we're verifying the data from there. And then we run it through our ABM models once we understand what we're looking at. And so for that particular case in point, you know, we um, we had the we had the current rents that those those buildings were getting uh, or homes were getting, I should say. Um, and we had uh, a lot of a lot of the uh, you know the the info from the seller that was given to the buyer. But then we did our valuations, we did our rent projections. You know, we put together an entire what we call our, our advanced SFR scrub report, and it's a, a very detailed spreadsheet. Um, you know, that if you printed it out, it's 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 multiple feet long, but um, you know, it contained everything that the buyer needed, and and we did that on a, as a fee consulting service, and we valued that portfolio at about 24 million. He ended up getting it under contract at I think at like 23 and some change. You know, so. So that's a service that, that we can provide. And, and we do that from a fee standpoint. And we've done that for you know family office, private equity groups, you know, some of the um, operators in the space that just need you know third party reporting, annual third party reporting. Um, you know, so that was just something we did for a buyer. 
and and he has since closed on that portfolio. Um, we didn't represent him from a, a, a brokerage transaction, but I suspect that when he's ready to sell, we certainly will, because you know he was he was very pleased with our service. But we go through that same exact process when we are onboarding uh, a portfolio from a seller that that wants to sell. So you know we we work hand in hand with him to clean and verify you know what he has. A lot of times we find. Uh, you know, a number of discrepancies where where they just didn't realize that the square footage was off, or or that there wasn't a permit, you know, on the the garage, you know, that that was turned into a fourth bedroom when they bought it from whoever they bought it from years ago, and you know, so little things like that we're we're cleaning and verifying, you know, to make sure that we've got a, a sellable deal, you know, as well as putting together, you know, a full operating expense budget based on their current numbers, and you know, assisting them and even you know finding some efficiencies in, in their operating expenses uh, if we can, which we often do. But then we also build the performa, you know, and the income approach moving forward based on, you know, where we know, you know, somebody can operate, especially an operator that that's building scale. Um, you know, so we we put both those sides together, you know, for the for the on behalf of the seller for the buyer. And then once we we get the listing, you know, we market it through all the typical commercial real estate channels. Uh, but we also, you know, drive everything back to sfrhub.com, and that's where buyers and, and and your your clients that are on this line can can register at sfrhub.com. They can look at the portfolios, you know, they can see the data, they can they can download and and request the data tapes from us. Um, they can use our financial modeling tools to start creating their own, you know, operating expenses based on on how they operate, and they can aggregate portfolios that that meet their needs. So. You know, sometimes, and then we typically encourage our sellers to allow for, you know, cherry picking, quote unquote. Um, and that doesn't mean that, you know, somebody's just going to take the best homes of the bunch because, you know, some buyers don't want the class A homes. They might want the class C homes in that portfolio, um, you know, or the B class homes or whatever. So it, it allows, um, you know, the buyers to aggregate portfolios that, that really meet their needs. You know, maybe they're looking at a, a seller's portfolio that's 100 homes and 25 of them fit in with with what they typically buy you know we we typically encourage the sellers to allow that because a buyer that's going to buy exactly what fits their criteria is more likely to to make a better offer than having to buy a bunch of homes they don't want and then take on the the um you know the cost of, of disposing those homes or, or figuring out what to do with them um you know because they don't fit into the buyer's buy box so we really try to to um, you know, help buyers find what it is they're looking for, and and give them the tools on sfrhub.com to you know cherry pick portfolios and and aggregate and and scale um, you know where where they're looking. And if we don't have a portfolio in in areas where they're looking today, the odds are we will you know fairly soon. So you know then then we just make sure we know that buyer's criteria, and when we get something, we say hey we've got something forthcoming, you know. Keep your eyes out. Uh, we're going to be bringing this to market here soon, and um, you know, hope to hope to get them, you know, kind of educated a little bit uh, beforehand on the portfolio to give them a leg up. Sure, sure. And you know, sort of dovetailing off of that, you know, we have a wide range of investors on the call today. So we have investors that are that you know maybe own ten or twenty homes that are looking to scale up. We have other investors who own. You know, several hundred homes looking to 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 scale up from there. Um, one of the things that's, that has really impressed me about uh, SVN SFR Hub is your wide range of portfolios. Not only from a, a geographic standpoint, but also from a price standpoint and, and the size of your portfolios. It really varies, and I think it it, it really plays well to the RCN. Uh, sort of customer base where, you know, we're kind of all over the map with investors at different stages of their career. Uh, Michael, maybe you could talk a little bit about maybe the average size of your portfolio and, you know, um, how that that plays out from a geographic standpoint across the U.S. Sure, sure. Um, you know, it's uh, if we're talking about existing homes, you know, I'd say our average size is probably closer to, to you know, plus minus 50. If we include our, our build for rent side of our company, you know, which is usually, you know, subdivisions of 150 homes plus minus, you know, we're probably closer to averaging about 80 
85 homes a portfolio. Um, you know, but as I said, on, on the existing side, for those looking for, you know, existing scattered home portfolios, um, you know, allowing that, that cherry picking really helps them, you know, kind of, you know, make sure they're, they're modeling the homes that they want to buy and, and they can pull those homes, you know, aside within SFRHub.com and say, you know, they, there's 15 homes that look good to them. They can pull those out, put them in a model and start adjusting numbers through there so they can, you know, they can make a good investment decision, you know, on those homes. But what we also share those tools, you know, via email with them as well. Uh, if they don't like doing everything online and would, you know, rather just play, you know, on their own desktop, so to speak. Um, but, uh, you know, we've got, again, through utilizing, you know, the SVN agents around the country and, and our marketing team doing a great job of, of you know, pulling together and, and, and utilizing partnerships such as yourself, um, you know, we're turning up deals all the time. So, you know, we, we may have one under contract and, in you know kansas city today and don't have anything behind that but you know in a few weeks we'll be underwriting another deal in kansas city so um you know there aren't many markets secondary you know tertiary or primary and secondary that we aren't in um you know some of the tertiary markets uh that i really like you know i, I hope to get more scale there I'm, I'm a big fan of the midwest um lots of rental homes there you know we're, we're starting to pick up some steam and in the Chicago market and like the Des Moines, Iowa market, you know, maybe even the Quad Cities, um, you know, Memphis, St. Louis. So, you know, but we're we're all over the Sun Belt and and you know, lots of opportunity for for you know just about anybody. And and we really have a varied, to your point, you know, not just a, a do we have sizable portfolios, but we we've got portfolios that range from you know A class to D class, you know, and, and there's, you know, it's real estate. So there, there's always something for everybody. We've got a 290 home portfolio in, in Lima, Ohio, uh, which probably very few are, are aware of geographically, but it's in between Dayton and Toledo. And, um, you know, it's a, you know, they're, they're lower price homes. It's, it's hard to get, well, you know, it's not financeable today, but, uh, but great returns. I mean, we're talking, you know, 10% plus cap rate, and it's in escrow at, at a at a price right now and and you know the, the buyer is working through the inspections and you know so we've got everything from you know as i said you know uh, you know cd class homes all the way up to you know brand new you know a plus class homes and, and everything in between so uh it, it's exciting to work in this market you know especially coming from a multifamily background um you know it's very similar in that there, there's there's a dog for every bone and you know some people some people like you know to get their hands dirty and work harder and and they're working harder on those those you know kind of lower class homes because they have higher returns and you know you're gonna you're gonna not have you know uh, the the higher returns on the class a but you're gonna have less capex so um you know it, it's uh we've got something for anybody and and it's it's fun to to work with you know the variety of different buyers and sellers that are out there. Yeah, no, and I think that's a good point. Now now that we're starting to talk a little bit about geography and certainly, you know, what we've been seeing uh as from the lender standpoint is we've been seeing, you know, a lot of coastal money, uh California West Coast and East Coast New York and you know kind of work your way down. A lot of that the the coastal investors that we've worked with for years have kind of run out of steam in their neck of the woods and have really started to look at some of these and this is a new trend this isn't a covid trend this this is a trend that's been going on now for a couple of years um but it's it's picking up steam even more uh today uh and then we're seeing you know well-heeled investors from from both coasts looking for opportunities and it can be primary Midwest markets as well as secondary uh, and tertiary. Um, certainly, you threw out some some cities there. I would throw out some some cities um, such as Columbus, Ohio, yeah, uh, which just tremendous growth in in single family home aggregation as well as appreciation. I might add, it's it's not just folks being happy with the values they're buying at today, but 
these homes are are still appreciating without a great deal of capex uh yeah. which really bodes well uh for the investor who's looking for a remote opportunity um you know maybe you could just throw in a little bit about you know kind of what your investors typically look like and are are they looking close to home are they looking far away what what are you seeing at SFR hub yeah and and it's really you know it's all over the board i mean i think you know if you looked back to you know 20 30 years ago uh you know prior to the advent of of what's happening in technology i think the standard investor you know 70 80% of the time typically invested within a 10 to 20 mile radius of where they live you know that simply isn't happening anymore uh, it, it's, it's completely changed. Um, you know, so we, we've got, uh, you know, one of the, one of the first deals we did, uh, on sfrhub.com when we first launched was a very small deal in, in Milton, Florida, uh, it was 17 homes, a challenging deal. Uh, majority of the homes were, were HUD homes and, 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 you know, I, I didn't even know Milton, Florida existed at the time. Um, yeah, you got me on Milton. I'm not sure where that one is. <laughs> it's near the near the Panhandle. Um, okay. Uh, you know we and then the good story. You know by utilizing SVN, one of the SVN agents in the country had a buyer out of Washington that he knew liked single family homes, and he introduced that buyer to us. And that gentleman happened to be from Washington. And he ended up closing on on a portfolio of, of 17 homes in Milton, Florida, and and he's since closed in Chicago, and and since closed, and, and is now in escrow in in Montgomery. Uh, and we see a lot of activity like that. Um, and and one of the, you know, one of the reasons that that we're helping facilitate those types of deals, and and, and of course, you know, people are investing locally, um, and and. You know, a lot of investors still try to keep a, a closer geographic, you know, to where they live from an operating standpoint. But but with where technology is today and with what we've done here at um, SFR Hub Advisors and aligning ourselves with, you know, groups like you, Jeff, but also we have alliance members that are in general contracting, uh, you know, property management, master policy insurance providers. So. So when there is a, a gentleman that says, hey, you know, I don't have any properties in this market, but I really like this deal and I'm interested in, in you know, looking at this. Well, you know, what else can you guys help me with? We say, great. Well, here's here's a list of property managers that are alliance members of ours that are in this market. You know, here's here's a couple of general contractors that we know that are in this market. You know, here's a master policy insurance provider, you know, that will will help you, you know, save some costs in your insurance. and you know, so we can essentially deliver them a team um, if they decide to move forward and close on it that will will help them in their operating. So, so you know, utilizing you know a lot of our support services, um, same as 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 debt, for instance. Um, you know, it it's, it just gives uh, gives investors a great opportunity to kind of get out of their their backyard, so to speak and go after investment opportunities that, that make better financial sense and still know that they've got, you know, quality property managers that they can trust, you know, quality general contractors. So when they're doing a unit turn, they know they got a good group and, you know, we, we can introduce uh, those in, in, in most markets around the country. And, and if we don't have those in some of these tertiary markets, and again, we get to leverage SVN and say, hey, you know, uh mobile who, who's a you know we'll call the multifamily guy and find out who some good contractors are in that area and you know typically in tertiary markets a, a good contractor does you know they work on everything so so we can make sure that we're always introducing you know the 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 right parties to to the buyer that wants to figure out how to make a deal work and then yeah, that's a great point uh, yeah, it, 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 without a doubt that added value that you're able to provide yep. is it's huge because yeah. these investors and we see it all the time Michael we you know sometimes they're coming into a market green and the introductions that their vendors whether it be yourself you know providing uh you know uh some sort of a contractor oftentimes uh as a lender, we're, we're often asked for, you know, who do we use for local inspections? What do we do for, 
you know, uh, remote rent collection. I mean, there's any number of services um, yeah. that a strong partner can typically help with. Exactly. Uh, it's important yeah. you have to have it. I mean, you can't you can't do a deal without it. So, you know, if we can if we can help streamline that and make it more efficient, so you know the buyer isn't googling you know every support service that they need and trying to figure out who the best is and calling references and 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 they can just say, hey, you know, SFR Hub, do you guys do you trust these guys? Well, absolutely, we've referred them you know dozens of times. They do great work. So you know it's important to be able to you know to get that out to to the buyers that need it. So, um, you know, sort of, you know, once again, you know, playing off that idea of relationships and things like that, you know, one of the things that we've seen with very sophisticated investors is um, them having to make difficult to choices about how they're going to allocate their dollars. And, you know, especially with your multifamily background, Michael, you know, maybe you could talk for just a minute about the comparisons between uh, not only, you know, just the cash on cash return from a single family investment or versus a multi, but maybe the overall 30,000 foot view on how the investor um, really gets comfortable with building out a single family portfolio versus a multifamily. Sure. Sure. And, you know, it's, it's, it's been fun um, because, you know, years ago when we were in this space, you know, multifamily guys, you would just say, hey, it doesn't make any sense, you know, to, to be looking at this like, you know, they're scattered. It's going to cost more, you know, this and that. But, you know, that's been that has already been proven, you know, by the REITs in the space to not be the case. You know, you just got to you got to have scale and, and you got to you got to you know know what you're doing and, and, and professionally manage it. But, um, you know, from. From my background and, and, and Jeff Kleins and, and a lot of the other guys here under under the SFR Hub umbrella and, and gals, I should say, um, you know, I mean, it's just it's been so fun, you know, learning, you know, from the very get go, learning about the SFR world and and certainly the the build to rent world, but um, you know, it, it's not it's not that complicated and it's not it's not you know, more of a struggle just because the homes are scattered out. I mean, this is, and, you know, I, I hate to, you know, it's unfortunate what's happened with COVID, but but it has 100% proved everything that we've been preaching for, for five, six years, uh, everything that all the SFR investors of the last 40 years have already known, and the same thing that all the big institutional guys are saying, this is, the safest and, and most risk mitigated asset class in the country. And, and it has proven itself again, you know, compared to multifamily, uh, office, retail, hospitality, you know, those for sure, you know, industrial is doing very well in, in certain markets and, um, you know, shopping centers struggling, of course. So, you know, collections across the board have been phenomenal in single family and, you know, you can't say that in any other asset class. You know, I think, um, you know, multifamily is performing better than they potentially expected, but they're still not at the level of 98, 99% rent collections that SFRs are at. And uh, I just, I mean, it's just not, it's not even comparable. And and when you, when you can, um, you know, start, you know, getting your operating efficiencies down and, and like we had mentioned, you know, making sure that they're introduced to the right crews. You know, if homes are scattered around Dallas or Phoenix or Atlanta or Memphis or wherever, you can operate them just as or more efficiently than you can 200 units in one location. Um, and then for a number of reasons, the operating the operating expenses are are less uh, than multifamily. As as a landlord, um, you know, in a multifamily building, you've got high utility costs. Um, you know, you've got, you know, you've, you've got covered parking, you've got exterior lighting, you, you, you're paying the water, the sewer, the trash, you know, th there's a lot of things that get covered under the, uh, in the single family world that the tenants are paying for. So, you know, you're driving some of those operating costs down and you also have a much stickier tenant where those, those tenants, and, and I'm preaching to the choir to all the, the, the SFR investors on the line here, but you know, these people stay you know, for three, four, five plus years. 
um, where you know in multifamily you're constantly turning turning those units. So there's there's a number, and and you know, and I'm not even talking about built for rent, which is just off the charts from an operating efficiency standpoint. Um, so it, it's just it's a phenomenal, stable, risk mitigated, does good in good times, does better in bad times, so to speak. You know, from a, a, a rental demand standpoint. So. You know, I have just thoroughly enjoyed uh, getting familiar with this space, you know, from the inception. And and I, I can tell you, I I didn't believe it at first either because I was a multifamily guy and and I just kept seeing the numbers. And I was like, this is a better, this is a better margin. This is a better cash on cash. You know, these are better returns and there's less risk. So uh, it just, I mean, I can't speak highly enough of the space and, and obviously everybody that's on the line uh, believes everything I'm saying, or, or you, you probably wouldn't be here listening. But hopefully, there are some that are that are thinking about getting into it. Um, but it, it's it's a phenomenal asset class, and it's a reason yeah, no I question. Love, you know? uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, it was a bit of a softball question, but <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, it's really important that the investors on the line today, and it, you know, we, I'm sure we have a fair number of investors that are on the line that are thinking about aggregating single family homes and haven't quite started getting there yet but it's it's it really important for them to understand you know what the experts in the marketplace are seeing and and you know with your background in multifamily um it, it really transitions well uh for folks to understand just how that the yeah. just that how it works now um Built to rent. We really haven't gotten into that yet today, um, but I'd like to. And certainly, we're seeing a build uh, built to rent model across certainly the southern United States really gathering steam. Maybe you could talk a little bit about the high level view, what you're seeing, and also what you're seeing from an SFR perspective uh, at your company. Yeah. Well, uh, from from a build to rent point of view. Um, and, and the SFRHub.com side of things, I mean, from a data perspective, we've underwritten over 50,000 new construction build for rent homes in the last two years. And, and since COVID, uh, we've, we've brought in almost 15,000 homes that we've, we've underwritten. Um, so we've got, you know, more data and expertise in the bill for rent space, you know, then, then And let me just interrupt there for a second, Michael. Maybe you could take our audience through, you know, what that under underwriting looks like from your perspective. In other words, you know, 50,000, that's an, a massive number. So, so how does it sort of flow through through your portal? How does that look when when that that built to rent opportunity comes along? If you could walk everybody through that. Sure. sure. Um so you know it's a it's a lot of work um we've got a great build for rent team here that comes from an extensive you know development construction land you know entitlements background so so the 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 first and foremost key to understanding um build for rent is understanding what developers and builders do and and because we come from that world you know it, it was easier for us to to transition into to you know underwriting build for rent but but what we never do when we're looking at bill for rent is try to assume what a developer or builder's cost is because, you know, a public builder is different from a local builder, right? And, and we don't get into that, but what we do work with them on is, you know, looking, okay, you got a, you got a, a 20 acre parcel, you know, anywhere United States. And, you know, if it's not at finished lot stage, but you think you can get, you know, uh, 215 finished lots that are 40 foot wide lots. Um, our build for rent team will go in and start reverse engineering. You know what it would look like um, from from an operational standpoint. So, so if if we know that the the home in that submarket on that site should be, say, just for flat number purposes, a two hundred thousand dollar retail price, we'll start there. And then work backwards and 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 reverse engineer the the unit mix, the floor plans, the elevations, and and really drill down to what what the best you know it, should it be seventy percent threes and thirty percent fours? Should that be flip flopped? Should there be some fives in there? You know, it's just really understanding the sub market first and foremost, and then understanding what can be built there. 
and then really looking at it from you know from a, a reverse engineered standpoint and and then once we once we get the developer builder comfortable with the numbers and they say oh yeah well we can you know we can build a home you know to that price uh does that price work for your investors yes or no and and you know that's that's what we've done uh in our underwriting is is to make sure that that it will pencil from a cash flow standpoint and and you know there's a lot that goes into it but once once we get that agreed then then it's listed on you know through SVN SFR Hub advisors and svrhub.com and again it could be you know far upstream where maybe you know the they're just starting their acquisition or they're just starting their their A and D or their horizontal uh development and um you know we start marketing well before homes are being delivered but that way it gives the capital the time and 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 the the resources they need to say okay well you know what if we put in a forward commitment to buy homes at co what does that look like or you know can we still bring some equity to the table and get pregnant in the deal and then be the back buyer you know there's a there's a number of different ways to do it but um you know mark peterson who's our national bill front director him and his team uh, they they really do a wonderful job at at any stage from raw land to finished lots to you know homes getting ready to go vertical to to quickly access, assess whether or not you know that works for build for rent and and we've spent a lot of time consulting with public builders regional builders uh, local builders around the country you know to help them understand the difference of of what a for sale home is compared to a, a for rent home. You know, you can bring down a lot of finish levels. You don't need nine elevations, you know, in a community. Maybe it's just three. So we go through a lot of cost savings and, and we really help them with their budget to, to show a builder, hey, you know, these line items in your budget, you know, aren't going to exist in a build for rent community because you don't have, you know, model homes. You don't have a uh, longer land carry costs. You, you don't have the, the marketing and, and payroll overhead. Uh, you don't have to deal with 200 realtors and 6% commissions um, and, you know, buyers falling out of escrow. You're dealing with one buyer and you can build it out quickly and hold on to your subs and, and order materials in bulk. So there, there's a lot that goes into it. And um, it's, uh, you know, again, getting back to your multifamily uh, comparison question, it it's operates leaps and bounds, uh, you know, better than multifamily and then still gets all the risk mitigation and stability that the single family market provides because it does good in good times and, and does good in bad times. Are you seeing uh, build for rent opportunities by investors being uploaded to your platform for sale or are you doing more consulting on the front end? What, what's the landscape sort of look like right now? It usually starts from a consulting standpoint and then you know we're always working to get them listed because we you know, we want to get them out to the buyers in the marketplace you know we've spent you know realistically when we saw the build for rent world starting to creep around back in in 2016 uh you know at the time colony starwood was you know arguably leading the charge in in looking at new construction homes from the institutional standpoint and you know so we jumped on that right away recognizing that there was going to be you know sort of uh, uh trouble with with negotiating with developers and builders um you know for groups that that didn't come from that background um so you know we were able to help the buyers understand hey this is you know these are developer and builder costs these are real and no you can't compare it to the 1995 home that's a block away that just sold on the mls because we're talking about a new construction home that doesn't exist and then you got to perform out the rents you know, just like you do a new construction multifamily, which we've got extensive background in under roof. So it, it was a natural fit for us, um, but it wasn't a natural fit for a lot of the buyers or the builders because the, the builders too are used to building for sale. So we had to consult and get them educated, you know, on, on you know, what a build for rent home should be, which would, would be from an interior finish level, much more similar to like a class A apartment, you know as opposed to the for sale builder is going to put down, you know, you know, nice tile or, or wood floors and, and, you know, use 
you know, higher end, um, you know, granite or, or marble countertops where, you know, you just, you don't need to go to those high end finishes and build for rent, but you need something that looks, looks as nice and is as durable, but you can just bring down those finish levels. So, so there is a lot of consulting on both sides to get to where we're at today. Um, you know, but we're, we're onboarding a number of build for rent deals and, and our, our, we were anticipating pre COVID and it, it actually happened, but we were anticipating 2020 to be the, the year of build for rent. And we had a number of deals in escrow right when COVID set in, you know, that we had been working on all through 2019 to get, get to market and get buyers engaged. And then they were, I think we had about $200 million of, of build for rent escrows. Uh, on our brokerage side, uh, that you know, that everything everything went away unfortunately by by March 20th when when you know the panic set in. But uh, but it's all it's all coming back again. So uh, you know, next year and the end of this year is going to be an exciting time for for getting some build for rent deals closed and moving forward in the future. The runway. Is yeah, it, it, it's years. certainly is an exciting time for built to rent um and without a question um maybe you could give some advice to folks who have been aggregating single family homes um and are really you know starting to feel that frustration with the 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 difficulty in scaling their portfolio where and maybe as quickly as they would like um and they're thinking about the build to rent model and and maybe dipping their toe into that. Maybe you could give some advice uh, for for investors across the United States who who haven't taken that step yet. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it, one. It's it's a great step. I mean, there, there's you know the challenges you know for especially in the the single family uh, portfolio space you know right now is is that um, you know home prices are are just skyrocketing and and nobody had anticipated that so. So it, it's squeezing the yields, um, and you know, especially with with um, operators that have a, a smaller portfolio, you know, a lot of them are saying, "Well, I can, you know, I got 20 homes, I can turn around and sell these on the open market right now," um, you know, at, at prices that I wouldn't have expected four or five months ago. Uh, so, you know, that's not going to last forever, of course, but but that that's causing a little bit of of heartache for those that are looking to to scale. Um, even though we're still continuing to onboard, you know, tons of portfolios that that, that are available today and, and will be available, you know, in, in the months ahead. Um, so I, I don't want to uh, discount opportunities, but um, in, in the build for rent space, you know, whether it's, um, you know, scattered lot inventory, because we work with a lot of public builders, um, you know, that that uh, a buyer could say, you know, if they're not, if they're not at a level, um, you know that that could take down a 200 home subdivision but they do have the capital to buy 20 homes well you know they can reach out to us and say hey who you know are you working with any builders in in nashville or, or atlanta or you know wherever that may be and the answer is predominantly going to be yes and and then you know maybe we can just you know get with some of our builder clients and and say all right well you've got subdivisions you know in this part of of this msa um are you willing to sell you know some homes at, at CO uh, to to an investor, and and they they usually say yes. So you know that's that's one area in build for rent where you know if you're you're already operating a scattered home portfolio in a market and you've got a few million dollars that you can place, but not thirty like you know an institutional group. Um, that's a way to to acquire some new construction homes, move a tenant in, you know, not have to deal with capex for five some odd years. You know those 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 tenants or residents, as I like to call them, you know, are typically, uh, uh, they have the pride of ownership of a homeowner because they're moving into a new home and they're, they're moving into that, that build for rent home because, because, you know, they've got kids that go to school in the neighborhood and, and they have a family and, and they don't plan on moving anytime soon. You know, they're not going to move into a four bedroom house and then, and then leave at, at 12 months later. I mean, the cost of that is, it doesn't make any sense. So, so you've got a great sticky tenant, uh, in place, you know, in that scenario, and it allows smaller investors to start building scale in new construction homes. Now, when we're when we're doing a full community of homes, and and I do want to um, uh, just draw a line of distinction uh, in the build for rent space. There's kind of two asset classes. One is you know what we call a horizontal apartment complex, which is you know smaller 
uh, 600, 800 thousand square foot units. You know, there might be 200 of them on one parcel of land, uh, which we consider a horizontal apartment, as opposed to uh, a single family subdivision, which are, you know, fee simple lots and three, four, five bedroom homes, you know, that are 1,500, 1,700, 2,000 square feet. Um, there, there seems to be a little confusion in the market on, on you know, what build for rent is. So um, I just, you know, they both work. I'm just drawing a line of distinction. But when I, when we talk about build for rent, we're, we're talking about true single family homes uh, in, a, in, a, in a subdivision. Um, and again, for all the same reasons that I just mentioned, um, you know, you know, high quality tenants, affluent tenants, families, you know, or baby boomers that are that are coming down from, um, you know, maybe a bigger home uh, further out in the suburbs, uh, or they just don't want the cost of ownership. But, um, you know, these communities uh, can be purchased, you know, in tranches. So let's say it's a hundred home subdivision and uh, the buyer commits to a price, we strike an agreement with the builder, and the builder can deliver 10 homes a month at certificate of occupancy. And the buyer, if they if they need a property manager, we can introduce them if they have them already. You know, once they're under contract, they can start that pre-leasing, you know, 90 days out before a home is even delivered. So once you've got certificate of occupancy on the first 10 homes with the builder, you close, you move those tenants in the following week, and then you know, a month later, 45 days later. You got another 10 homes and then another 10 and another 10. So so you're you're leasing it up as you go. So by the time you 10 months later, 12 months later, you've closed on on 100 homes, you've got a fully leased community. And and now now you're just running into operations, right? And and it's a it's just a great way to um, you know, to go about acquiring new construction built for rent communities. Um, what I think is going to start happening, you know, even more so moving forward uh, now that it's catching steam is, is you know, we're going to see more builders probably taking on uh, some of that lease up risk too and starting to deliver homes fully leased. You know, I think we're probably another year or two out from from seeing more people get on that bandwagon. But I, I think I think the real opportunity today is is to buy homes at certificate of occupancy, um, you know, from from a builder, you know, that we're working with and, um, you know, utilizing our services to make sure that you're underwriting it properly. I mean, we do that all in the front end anyways, but, you know, help you uh, if you're not used to dealing with builders, you know, help you with, you know, builder speak, developer speak, you know, make sure you're understanding, you know, what needs to be in the contract uh, that will will satisfy and protect you as a buyer and and make the builder happy as well. And, you know, start start building a portfolio of build for rent that way, uh, too. Yeah, no, that's that's very well said. And we're certainly seeing that um, at RCN. Uh, Michael, we're coming up on the top of the hour. Um, maybe just uh, real quick, uh, some closing thoughts and how folks can reach out to you and uh, engage some of your services. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I, 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 I'll apologize if I talk too much and you didn't get to all your questions, Jeff. But um, the the easiest way to to reach out to me, I mean, I'm uh, you know all over the internet, so. You can Google my name and, and my phone number will pop up. But um, you know, you can reach out to anyone at sfrhub.com. Uh, um, you can Google us. Uh, www.sfrhub.com is the easiest way to sign up, uh, get registered. Um, we'll we'll get you. Our team will get you certified and you know open up access to all of our inventory and you know whether or not you're you're looking to discuss single family existing portfolios or build for rent. Uh, we'll get you with the right, uh, you know, parties within our organization to have those conversations. Whether you're a buyer or a seller, you know, we can help. Um, you know, one one quick point that I want to make: if you are a seller um, and and you're looking to move a portfolio, and then, you know, just for whatever reason, maybe maybe you, you just you're you're kind of tired of the tenants and toilets, uh, and you want like a triple net deal. You know, we can help you dispose of your asset and then get you introduced to the right commercial agent to find you, you know, um, you know, a, a, a Walgreens or, a, you know, a, a Chevron or, or whatever. You know, we, we, we deal with a lot of, um, you know, I guess, baby boomer sellers that that are looking to, you know, just kind of go off in, in the in the sunset and, and they don't want to deal with with, you know, 100 homes. They'd rather have one building that's a triple net. So we can always help 
in that regard too, uh, given that we're a commercial brokerage. But um, you know, I just I want I want to say thank you, Jeff. Um, and and I you know I just can't be more excited to be involved in the single family investment and, and build for rent space. You know, like I said before, it's a, it's a proven asset class and it has been for 50 some odd years. And it's exciting now that the institutional players and high net worth investors are paying attention to it because uh, you know it's it's unlimited opportunity. It's certainly uh, the best asset class in the country, and uh, you know we look forward to assisting and working with you know anyone and everyone that that would like like to utilize our services. Well, I, yeah, I really appreciate it, and. Um... You know, Michael, uh, at RCN, we choose our partners very carefully. Um, you know, we've put a lot of time and effort into building our company and and protecting our our cherished customers. So when you know when we come on board and and enter a, a relationship like this, uh, it speaks highly of you and your company. And and we're really glad uh, that we've put this together. Uh, the information that you shared today with our customer base uh, was timely and, and it was really in depth. And I can't thank you enough for that. And um, I look forward to uh, speaking with you again soon. And I look forward to speaking with all the customers on the line today. Feel free to reach out to Michael, Michael directly. And of course, uh, if you need anything at all at RCN, info at rcncapital.com. And uh, the partnership continues. So thank you so much and good day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.